Welcome back everyone. The next big topic in JavaScript that we'll tackle is logic. How do we implement decisions? How do we make choices in our code so that we have different outcomes? This is obviously a very, very important part of writing applications, writing games, pretty much anything remotely interesting that you would build with JavaScript needs to have some decision making going on. It shouldn't just be the exact same thing every single time. I'm sure someone could prove me wrong on that, but most applications that you interact with that I use day to day, they all have some form of decision making going on, often hundreds of decisions. So just to give you an example of kind of what I'm talking about. Here is an interactive chess game built with JavaScript. There are tons and tons of decisions. Here's a really simple one, some simple logic. When I click on a piece, I'm white down here. I can move it, assuming that I'm trying to move to a valid space, so that works. But if I try and move to an invalid space, there is some logic that checks. Am I hovering or am I dropping this piece over a place where it can move? Yes or no? There's a different outcome. Same thing with clicking on one of my opponent's pieces. I can pick it up, but if I try and drop it anywhere, it doesn't matter if it's valid or invalid as far as the piece is concerned and how it moves, it's not my piece. So there's logic that says, if that's not, <laughs> if it's not movable, if it's not your piece, you can't move it. Don't do anything, just return it to where it was. Then we've got things like Netflix. When I go to Netflix, if I'm not signed in, then I see a different page. There's some logic, there's a decision that's made is the user signed in? If they are, show them their main Netflix homepage. If they're not, show them the whatever this is, advertising promo landing page. If I do try and sign up, I'll click submit without specifying an email or password. There's logic that checks. Is there an email? Is there a password? If not, don't submit the form. So that was a choice. We, the form was not submitted. There is a branching path and we get two red boxes with different error messages. Now, as I fill out an email, like cat at gmail.com, notice that as soon as this becomes a valid email pattern, so .com, it turns green. There's more logic there. It's checking, is that valid as far as the actual pattern or shape of my text, cat at gmail.com. Anyway, you can see where I'm going with this. There are decisions, there are branching outcomes and paths in any application out there, whether it has to do with being logged in, a game and different logic, there's just so many different things you can do, but they all hinge on the same basic logic building blocks. So that's all we're gonna talk about in this section. There's a good amount to cover. Here are some of the goals. We're gonna start by talking about comparison operators. Later, we'll talk about a second set of operators called Boolean operators. So our good friend, the true or false primitive value, the Boolean is coming back. We'll spend a lot of time getting to know it. And then we'll write conditional statements. So those are the actual decisions we make, the branches we can add to our code. So that's where we're going. I will shut up and see you in the next video when we actually start with comparisons.